only mode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our latest webinar. My name is Cheryl Jennison DeProza, and I'm speaking to you live from Sure Corporate Headquarters here in Rainy Niles, Illinois. Today, we're going to be talking to you about one of our latest wireless systems, the BLX. Um, it's a great system. It's got some great new features, and I hope that you're all going to be as excited about it as we are. Um, before I pass it over to Gino to tell us more about it, uh, just a few items of housekeeping. Um, today's webinar will be recorded as they usually are. Um, they are all archived at our website at shore.com slash training. Feel free to peruse some of the older webinars or if you want to check this one out or send it to your colleague, they're, they're there for your use. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type them in into the question pane. We will be getting to those towards the end. Um, if you cannot see the question box, yeah, just click on that little orange arrow up in the right-hand side, and that should get you where you need to be. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Gino. Take it away, Gino. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Cheryl, and thank you to everyone for joining us this morning for yet another edition of the Sure Learning Center webinars. Uh, boy, it seems like uh, we've got a pile of these now, and I guess if you if you look at the uh, the archive page that that Cheryl mentioned, you'll you'll be able to find them there, and and of course this one will end up there as well. But right now we're going to talk to you uh, right here about the new BLX wireless system. For any of you who may have uh, attended the NAM show this past January, you might have gotten a sneak preview of this system. We had. Uh, uh, introduced it there, and uh, we are getting ready or very close to actually shipping this product. It's 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 imminent, and so I figured this would be a good time to share with you uh, more about this uh, latest and greatest wireless microphone system from Sure. So um, here it says next generation wireless, and why does it why why does it say that? What does that mean? Uh, well, we've kind of you know looked around at. Uh, at at our product line and and realize you know we've got a lot of different wireless microphone systems uh, and that's actually one of the prime you know calls that we get a lot is you know well you know I want to buy a wireless microphone system and boy sure you you've really got a, a whole pile of them there and I'm not sure which one to buy um, so what we're able to do with BLX here is actually sort of uh, consolidate and create sort of a, a best of product kind of uh, from the other sort of entry level uh, more affordable wireless microphone systems and that's really kind of where, where BLX lies. Um, it's for, for all these people you see on the screen here whether you're a singer or a guitar player or a, maybe an aerobics instructor or doing a doing a presentation or you know speaking at your church whatever it happens to be uh, the BLX wireless is a, has a has a solution that'll work for that um, and, and again this the, this kind of falls more you know more towards the entry mid tier level of product it's not really intended for the you know the high end Broadway pro touring sound applications although it sounds good enough that you probably could use it for those and we'll talk more about that in a minute here um, but it really does uh, it really does kind of hit that that entry level market. So to help make sense of kind of where BLX comes from, maybe it's worth just a brief recap of kind of what is currently residing in that uh, that price level, and then see what what we've done to make BLX sort of uh, really take all that to the next level. So right now, uh, you've got kind of the, the entry level, most affordable Sure Wireless is the Performance Gear Wireless. You see the PG4 uh, Performance Gear receiver in the upper left-hand side of the screen there. And then also the PGX series. So you see the PGX4 receiver kind of off to the right side of your screen there. And the BLX is, you know, for all practical play purposes or replacement for those two systems, which which aren't discontinued yet, um, but you'll kind of see where BLX sort of really combines sort of the best of sort of both of those features um, from both of those systems and kind of takes it really to, to the next level, along with borrowing even some things from the SLX series, which is kind of the next rung up the ladder, kind of getting to a more professional rack mount receiver. So really the BLX is, is like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a best of product that that really synthesizes features from all of those, and and also upgrades the performance sort of uh, sort of across the board here. So, uh, talking specifically about BLX, what are the sort of major themes that we want to hit on when we're talking about the product here? Uh, number one is multiple receiver form factors. Now, so by kind of consolidating product lines at the entry level price point here, uh, we've created one series, the BLX with multiple options for receiver, so you can choose just the right one for your particular application, and we'll, we'll look at those in a minute here. Uh, improved audio performance. Uh, if we're going to make a new wireless mic system, 
we're going to make it sound as good as we possibly could. And we found some ways to yet further tweak the audio um, specs of our system to, to improve that. Improved battery life as well. And I won't keep you in suspense. I'll tell you, it's 14 hours with two AA alkaline batteries. That's nearly double what we used to be able to do. I think we would spec eight hours on any of our other AA systems. So uh, that ends up being a great cost savings in the long run there with the better battery life. And we've improved how the frequency selection works on these systems, uh, both in the number of frequencies you can get to with the BLX system and the receiver's ability to identify a clear frequency for you. It's all, uh, it's all vastly improved. Let's talk about the receivers first then, since we have several, and it's kind of important to know what the, maybe the differences are between them. So the uh, kind of, what really kind of replaces the PG and PGX receivers here is the BLX4 receiver, what you see on the top there. This is what we refer to as kind of a tabletop style receiver, right? So these are the kinds that are uh, meant to just sort of sit on top of your guitar amp, or you put it up on a shelf somewhere, or just kind of let it sit sort of wherever it needs to be, not, not necessarily a rack mount of solution but a very lightweight portable solution still a diversity receiver uh, with the internal antenna design borrowed from the performance gear receiver so you had the pg4 was the first one to kind of implement that and it's it's a nice thing just from an aesthetic point of view you don't have to look at those antennas but really just then you don't have to worry about them breaking off if you're throwing this thing in your gig bag or whatever you happen to be doing with it uh, the antennas are just inside sort of hidden away but still the same diversity performance that you would expect out of any of our out of any of our other receivers. Um, we've now added uh, group and channel scan to this receiver. So the old performance gear receiver, PG4, didn't have any scanning. The PGX4 had the simple uh, channel scan where you hit the channel button and it found one clear frequency for you, which is great if you're only using one system. But if you're using multiple systems, it's best to know which group has the most clear frequencies in it. And you can get that with the B any of the BLX receivers. And we'll take a closer look at that when we talk about frequency selection a little later on. And of course, the ability to lock out the, uh, the, the functions and the power switch so someone doesn't accidentally turn these things off. You'll also notice that we have a dual channel version, which is called the BLX88. So that's re refla replacing the old PG88 receiver. Uh, and uh, again, there's nothing particularly you know, special about it other than it's two BLX4s in one housing. So if you want to just have the convenience of carrying around two channels of wireless in one box that share one power supply, you could use the BLX88 for that. It still is two independent outputs, both XLR and quarter inch outputts on the back of the receiver, mic, mic level outputs there. Uh, but again, just kind of the, the convenience of the two channels there. And again, if you're comparing this directly with what it's replacing, which was the PG88 receiver, PG88 again didn't have any scanning functions at all. It just was a manual channel selection process. So not only do you get the improved audio and RF performance of the BLX receiver, but the scanning functionality as well, uh, as well as AA batteries, the old performance gear transmitters. We didn't talk about transmitters yet, but uh, the old PG transmitters were 9 volts. So AA's is also a saving there. So particularly in the dual channel variation, it's, a, it's an upgrade all the way around. Uh, but slightly borrowed from the uh, SLX series now is a metal half rack receiver, the BLX4R. So this is really kind of a key sort of new thing in the BLX series to be able to get into a rack mountable receiver with remote with detachable antennas on it at, at this particular price point is, is kind of a breakthrough there. Um, so again, the, as you can see, the antennas are external. So these are the typical sort of quarter wave antennas that we would include also with like the SLX receiver. And they're remote mountable. And not, they're, the antennas themselves are not remote mountable, but they are detachable so that you could use other antennas for remote mount applications. Um, if, you, if you need to pull antennas from a, you know, a rack mounted receiver in a closet out into a room, you could attach the halfway of antennas directly to this receiver. If you're using multiple receivers, you could uh, do uh, antenna distribution, which is an important thing. Uh, you know, that's uh, when when you're using more than just a handful, you know, two or three receivers, it's always a good idea to use an antenna distribution system, which allows the rack mounted receivers to share one pair of antennas. And so having a, a, a re receiver with removable antennas like that allows you to get into uh, external antenna distribution. I should note that there 
for those of you who use uh, remote antenna amplifiers or amplified antennas, uh, there is no DC voltage present though on these antenna jacks. Again, just like the SLX4 receiver. So that means you can't attach an amplified antenna directly to the BLX4R. But if you've got several receivers connected to an antenna distro, then of course you would use the antenna distro, which would be able to power those um, amplified antennas for you uh, if necessary. All the rack mount hardware again is included, so you can, and including the front mount antenna kit as well, which you need. Again, all mounted in a, in a metal chassis. Uh, quick scan frequency selection, which we'll talk more about in a minute, is of course also implemented on this receiver. And it has a nice uh, backlit LCD display as well for more information. Again, when you start getting into the, the uh, you know, half rack style receivers, um, often it's a higher tier of user that might like to see a little bit more information. So you get, you can, um, you know, find out exactly what uh, group and channel you're using as well as what TV channel you're operating within. You can't see the exact frequency like, you know, 598 megahertz or whatever. That's a feature that you get, you know, when you start jumping up into some of the higher tier systems. But, uh, but at least you can see which television channel you're operating in. And if you happen to know that TV channel is broadcasting in your city, well, there's an indication that that's a, a bad frequency and you probably shouldn't be using it. Uh, you've got a five-segment RF meter as well, so you can get more accurate information on what the actual received signal strength is uh, there. Antenna indicators that show you whether the receiver is using the A or the B antenna. Uh, and an audio meter for accurately setting your, uh, your gain on your transmitter. You can monitor the audio uh, meter on the receiver to make sure that you've got that adjusted uh, just properly and you're not clipping or anything like that. And of course, a lock indicator, which isn't shown here now, but you can lock out the front panel. And a bicolor battery indicator as well, which, um, actually, let me go back a screen here. You can see that uh, on the front panel off to the left side, it's green indicating good battery life from your transmitter. Uh, and if your transmitter battery gets low, not only can you see that on the transmitter, but that LED on the receiver turns red as well. So then you can, you can know that you have a, a low battery from whoever happens to be monitoring the receivers. So all in all, a lot of nice features, again, on an affordable rack mount receiver. Let's talk about the transmitters here. Uh, of course, as you would expect, handheld and body pack transmitters. Here are the three microphone options in the BLX series, the PG58 for kind of your entry-level microphone, of course, the classic SM58, and the Beta 58 is kind of your upgraded dynamic microphone here. Uh, so that's that. One thing you might note, though, uh, a difference from past Sure wireless systems is that we've gone to a fixed head design in the BLX series. Uh, on other Sure wireless systems, you can, uh, which is maybe you know a reason if someone's looking to upgrade to a higher tier system, what do you get? Well, one of the things you get on the higher tier systems now is the ability to interchange mic heads. So if you had a handheld with an SM58, you could change it to a Beta 58. The BLX series, you buy it. It is what it is. So you know, make sure you pick the right microphone um, when you're making your purchase decision. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 14 hours of battery life with two double A's. There's a 10 dB pad uh, in case uh, you're clipping the transmitter, singing a little bit too hard. You can pad that down right there. Bicolor battery LED. And uh, a new feature here is optional color ID caps that cover the little antenna nub you see sticking out of the bottom there. Uh, we have a package of caps you can buy. I think it's five different colored caps that snap right over those antennas so you can easily identify different microphones from a distance without having to use colored tape wrapped around the bottom of the microphone. So kind of a nice little perk there. Here's the body pack transmitter, the BLX1. Uh, a very slim design, which is kind of nice. It's a smaller body pack than the systems that it's replacing, which is always a good thing. Smaller and lighter on body packs is usually appreciated. We've uh, gone to a tactile on-off switch here, which means that uh, you you know one position is on, one position is off. Uh, again, getting rid of the soft switch that we used on PG and PGX, which is more of a push and hold to turn on, push and hold to turn off. Turns out that for uh, particularly in house worship applica applications where the, the pastor may be wearing a body pack under some robes or vestments and can't see the switch, it's nice to have a tactile on off switch so you know which way it is. Or if you're a guitar player and the pack is on the strap on your back uh, and you can't see it again, an on off tactile on off switch turns out to be a very good thing. So you do get that on the BLX1 along with a continuously adjustable gain control. So you can uh, actually has 26 dB of adjustable range, so you can move it from from low to high, uh, you know, to get it set just right, no matter what you're plugging into it. It turns out that with body pack transmitters, there's a whole variety of things that might get plugged into it, from a super hot electric base with active pickups 
to a lot to a headset microphone to a, a lavalier microphone on a very quiet talker and having the continuously adjustable gain control allows you to get it calibrated just right so that you get the best audio performance out of the system still uses the same TA4M input connector like all of our other body pack transmitters again 14 hour battery life by color LED for battery status so good stuff on the body pack there so those are the components. Let's talk about sound quality now. Of course, sound quality is always somewhat objective, right? I mean, I could sit here all day and, and tell you, you know, well, this system sounds the best, but, you know, you could say, well, of course you said that, you work for sure. Um, but there's, a, there's actually a pretty particular way to, to judge the sound quality of a wireless system that isn't very subjective, and that's basically it should sound like you're not using a wireless system. Uh, the less characteristic that the wireless system imparts on the sound of the microphone or on the sound of your guitar, uh, the better it is. Ideally, you don't, you, it shouldn't sound any different than when you're using uh, a wire. Uh, in an analog system, an analog wireless system like BLX, you have to, uh, you have to do something called uh, companding to, to make the uh, dynamic range of the system be what it needs to be for professional applications. An FM radio transmission only has about a 50 dB dynamic range. So you need to compress your audio signal in the transmitter to fit into that 50 dB dynamic range and then re-expand it again in the receiver. It's a process called companding, which is a contraction of the words compressor and expander. Every analog wireless microphone system in the world has this. Digital systems don't, and that's a different story. And if you want to learn about that, join us next month for the uh, webinar on our GLXD digital wireless mic system, but BLX being analog still has to have this compander. Analog companding has been around for a long time, and there have been many improvements to the point where they actually do, you know, the good ones sound pretty good. And back in 2002, we introduced something that we call audio reference companding, which is a variable ratio companding scheme that was first implemented on our ULX wireless system. And since then, we've been able to tweak it and make a lot of improvements in the way that the audio reference companding uh, performs such that in, in the BLX it's gotten to a point where even on an entry level system it really sounds very good. One way to measure the sound of a wireless system is to just look at the frequency response. So on this particular chart here we're looking at the frequency response of a wired SM58 in the black line there versus a SM58 through a BLX wireless system and you notice that they're almost identical. I mean this is about as close as you could possibly ask for between a wired and a wireless system, there's, a, there's almost no difference there. So the frequency response is, is very, very linear in, in, in the wireless system. And again, looking at the companding here, uh, how you track that is, you know, again, are you hearing any compression? Are you hearing any expansion? Is any of that actually, you know, affecting the dynamic response of the system? And so here we're comparing the BLX to the, uh, the BLX companding to the PGX companding. And what you'll notice here is that, you know, for higher signal level sources, BLX is pretty linear and sounds pretty good. But as the incoming signal to the transmitter gets weaker, you'll start to notice a little bit of expansion happening there. That's why the red line dips down, whereas the blue line stays sort of straight. And this can affect your sustain. If you're a guitar player and you, you know, play with a lot of dynamics, and some guitar players do, some don't. Um, for those who are a bit more dynamic and tend to let things ring out and sustain, when you're using PGX, you might notice it didn't sustain quite as long as it, you might have thought it should have. BLX, of course, as you can see here, doesn't have that issue. It's very linear. Whatever the input is, the output tracks very closely. Um, to the point where BLX really, uh, hopefully there's someone from our sales department on this call, um, sounds as good as the higher end systems like UHFR. Of course, that's maybe my subjective opinion, um, but it is a, a really good sounding wireless system, again, particularly for an analog system at this particular price point there. So there's, there, there really has been improvements in the audio of BLX. Talking about frequency selection now again, this is this is an important thing because if you've been paying attention to what's been going on over at the FCC, you might be aware of the fact that the spectrum available for wireless microphones to operate in has been getting more crowded. We share spectrum with the television bands in UHF. There's been a lot of rigmarole as things get moved around and they try to make more spectrum for broadband, which means that being able to uh, select a clear frequency for your wireless system becomes very important. It's, it's no longer a matter of just take it out of the box and turn it on and, hey, look, it's going to work. You really do need to pay attention to these things. 
when you're buying a wireless mic system, you want to be able to buy a system that has uh, the most available frequencies. That's your that's your guarantee that your system is going to be able to work into the future is picking one that has a wider range of tuning. And that's one thing that we've really improved on the BLX is widen the tuning range of the system to 24 megahertz, wider than that of the Performance Gear or the PGX system. In fact, it's equivalent to the SLX system. Uh, also, 12 compatible systems per band. That means you can use up to 12 BLX systems, potentially, in the same room at the same time, which is, you know, enough system, wireless systems for most people. Uh, again, this is even though the, the BLX is a lesser expensive system, these RF specs are pretty much equivalent to SLX series. So um, a good thing there. So let's look at the quick scan thing. I mentioned that this was uh, an improvement here. So uh, I'll just play this little video, which kind of demonstrates this. But you'll notice that you hit uh, the group button there, and it immediately goes into the group scan mode. And this is what's a new feature for the BLX systems is um, it scans through all of the pre-programmed groups of compatible frequencies and comes back and tells you which group has the most clear channels in it. Again, the PGX system just had channel scan, it would find one clear channel for you. But if you're using more than one system, and this is important here for you people who use more than one wireless mic system, they all the systems, all the receivers should be set to the same group, and you need to use different channels within that group. So again, doing the group scan here on the first receiver finds the group and says, okay, group A is the best group, channel one is the best channel. Then you go to your next receiver, you set it manually to group A, and then do a channel scan and let it find the next clear channel in group A, and then keep going. So the third receiver, set it to group A, do a channel scan, until they're all set to clear channels. So the quickness of the scan here, why we call it quick scan, right, makes it a really sort of useful thing in terms of being able to get all these systems up and running. Uh, I go to the next uh, video here, now we'll see the uh, BLX88 receiver doing its scan. And what's useful about this is that you'll notice that when the scan completes, it actually does a scan for both channels. So right now it's scanning through all the groups. When it gets to the end, it's going to bump the first channel to A1 and then put the second one to A2. So now we're not set to the same frequency because, boy, that was a, a common mistake on the PG88 was the people calling up complaining that the microphones aren't working and they're getting lots of dropouts. And they'd say they don't understand why, because both channels are set to the same channel, so it should be working. Ooh, no, that's probably the worst thing you could do. So the, 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 the BLX88 here literally prevents you from doing that by doing a group scan and automatically setting up both channels for you. Then you program the transmitters to matching frequencies, and you're in business there. So that's... Uh, that's a, uh, that's a, a useful thing. And of course, the BLX for our rack mount receiver, I did make a little video for that one, but it does, it has similar functionality with the quick scan there. So let's take a spin through a few different system configurations here. Um, we'll look first at the standard BLX4 receiver, so the single channel tabletop receiver, body pack systems. I won't read all of these to you, I'm sure you're all perfectly capable of reading them yourself, but you'll notice there's us usual array of guitar, lavalier, headset, and instrument systems. Uh, the lavalier is a cardioid lavalier, it's the PG85 uh, lavalier and the PG30 headset. The instrument system, and by instrument, you know we usually end up meaning, meaning um, saxophones and trumpets and things with a bell that the mic can be clamped to, is the Beta 98 uh, microphone there. So those are different body pack options. Again, we already talked about the handheld, the three handheld options for BLX, PG58, SM58, and Beta 58. For, for those of you who may have been around for a while and have um, uh, gotten comfortable with our, um, oh, I just noticed a typo on this slide for the lab, the Beta 58 one should say BLX24 slash Beta 58. I uh, apologize for that. Um, but if you've been paying attention, you, you might have noticed that we've, uh, we, we tend to modify uh, the mic uh, model numbers from time to time. Uh, and in the past, you're ordering a Sure Wireless with a Beta 58. You may have actually had to spell out the word beta in the SKU for when you're modeling it. Now it's been reduced to just B58, so it's uh, it's less characters. We did the same thing on the uh, on the 98 there. It says uh, B98 instead of beta 98. So uh, always check your price list. Make sure you're ordering the correct model numbers instead of falling back on what appeared to, at one point, maybe been a convention. Uh, here's the dual channel system configurations here. Again, there's several here depending on whether you want two handhelds or two body packs with lavs 
or a body pack and a handheld with a lav, or a body pack and a handheld with a headset. There's, uh, again, a, a few different options there, and, and these will all be, of course, uh, detailed in your sure, uh, sure price list to, to find out what configuration options you can get. It's not exhaustive, but it's the most common uh, configurations are available. And then finally, we've got the, uh, the half-rack receiver configurations. And so these are all de um, designated by the R in the model number, letting you know that you're getting the, the 4R rack mount receiver. But it's not just the receiver that's different. The mic options that are available as well. So again, within the BLX series, by choosing the rack mount receiver, you also get the option of uh, a couple of different a uh, little bit higher end microphone options. For example, we offer an omnidirectional lavalier microphone, the WL93, with the rack mount receiver, and the unidirectional or cardioid lav uh, is an upgrade from the PG85 to the WL185, uh, one of our Microflex lavalier microphones, so a little bit nicer mic there, as well as the option of an ear set microphone. So the, the BLX14R slash MX53 include the MX1 to 53 ear set microphone uh, pictured in the, in the lower uh, photograph there. Uh, and that is uh, particularly uh, with the half rack receiver because uh, that's a really popular microphone for house of worship applications. We are big fans of using ear set microphones for, um, for the, the pastor in the house of worship simply because the microphone is so much closer to your mouth that you get more consistent sound quality because you know the mic tracks with your mouth instead of your mic moving your mouth moving away from the mic like with a lavalier and much better game before feedback because the microphone is so close to your mouth and we also anticipate that again for house of worship applications you will you'll be using the rack mount receiver more option uh, option more often because you typically uh, you know use more receivers which is a good way good application for the rack mount and you know usually in a nice installed sound system the receivers will be rack mounted and again the 4R is really designed for that so all in all that's a really kind of key package for the house of worship market there. Of course, the Beta 98 option is still available. And then there's two handheld options with the rack mount receiver, the SM58 and the Beta 58. The, the PG58 more entry level mic is kind of reserved just for the tabletop style receiver. But again, it's probably important to note the rack mount receiver doesn't have any performance differences from the tabletop receivers. Same number of channels, same number of frequencies, same scan features, same audio performance, just in a, in a different uh, in a different form factor there. And again, the packages have the different the different microphone options. So I guess uh, what maybe would kind of help with a summary here is to kind of look again at how BLX compares to the systems that it's uh, slated to replace here, the performance gear and PGX systems. Again, a wider RF tuning bandwidth, which allows you to get to more open channels, which is important in this more crowded spectrum landscape that we're facing, as well as a larger number of systems per band. Uh, as far as the scanning goes, uh, again, we've uh, well, we've upped it from no scanning on the performance gear wireless and upped it from channel scanning only on PGX to include the group scan, which is a key feature for getting multiple systems set up on clear frequencies. Uh, again, AA batteries with vastly improved battery life. And then looking at the body pack, specifically the tactile on off switch and the continuously variable gain uh, really are, are a couple of nice features there. Uh, what's not included here, uh, what uh, people sometimes ask is, well, what about the BLXR receiver versus SLX? Uh, there still are a couple of good reasons to choose the SLX system, even though it is more expensive. Yes, it's a metal half rack mount receiver uh, with the same RF tuning specifications, but the SLX receiver allows you to get into what we call a master list mode, which gives you access to 960 frequencies. So for, for more advanced frequency coordinations where you're really trying to maximize the number of channels you can get on the air, in other words, you need more than 12, but maybe you're more in the 20 to 30 range, you would want to be in the SLX so that you can get into this master list mode, which will really allow you to get, uh, get a lot more channels on the air like that. Uh, also, if you're looking for some of the higher end uh, microphone options like a Beta 87 uh, condenser mic or an SM86 condenser mic, those are only available on the SLX series. And remember on the BLX, because you don't have the interchangeable heads, you can't just buy a BLX with an SM58 and then swap it out for a Beta 87. That, that, that's not an option. So if you're looking for those higher end, uh, higher end condenser mic handhelds, you would also be in the SLX series, as well as the wireless goose, gooseneck and boundary mic options on the SLX too. So um, again, BLX 
uh, even though it on the surface might look like, well, gee, this replaces SLX2, it, it, it really doesn't. It, what, what it does offer you is a rack mount style receiver if you need it uh, at, a, at a price pretty much equivalent to where the PGX series used to land. So uh, sort, of a, sort of a nice thing there. Again, improved sound quality, longer battery life, more intelligent scanning, more frequency agility. All, all good things on the BLX series. That is uh, how, we, uh, how we define it, I guess, by that term of, of next generation wireless. A uh, quick note before I turn it back over to Cheryl to see if there's any questions. Um, again, we do have two webinars coming up in May. In fact, I believe those the dates were just announced yesterday, uh, which you can find at sure.com slash training or in your dealer newsletter if you're a Sure dealer. But that we're going to cover the GLXD wireless, which is the other new wireless mic that we introduced at the NAM show this year and also will be available soon. And this is our latest generation of digital uh, wireless microphone system. So if you want to learn all about that system, uh, again, that'll be in the, probably the first week in May. And then a little later in the month, we'll have an overview of the Shirt Earphone lineup uh, for you fans of, of listening devices, uh, whether it's for on-stage personal monitor use or just plug it into your iPod to make your music there sound, sound better than the supplied earphones. Uh, we'll take a, a look at what we have to offer with the earphone line. If you have any uh, technical questions that you'd ever like to uh, ask us, you can reach us at the phone number indicated on the screen or email support at sure.com. Inquiries about training events can be sent to training underscore us at sure.com. And of course, visiting sure.com slash training, you can find not only our webinars, but all of our upcoming training events, as well as uh, any of the archived webinars. So there you go. That's BLX. I'm going to uh, hand it back to Cheryl and see if uh, we've got any questions that I can answer for you. All right. Thanks, Gino. We do have a couple of questions. Um, first thing I wanted to touch on, um, back on the dual system SKUs uh, for the BLX 88s, mm -hmm. um, could we check that slide? I think, I think some people had pointed out that we actually have them listed as PG. Um, <laughs> those are actually going to be... Good catch. See, this is what... <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. I'm sorry. Now I feel really embarrassed. <laughs> no You're right. Worries. Those should say uh, BLX instead. Wow. That, yeah. Please ignore those skew numbers. That was um, that was rapidly inserting a slide at the last moment and not double checking myself. Okay. A couple more questions um, in regards to um, the scanning features. Um, when you have two standalone receivers. Um, what is it that keeps uh, the second receiver from finding the same channel that the first receiver found? Oh, good question. Um, actually, uh, nothing. Uh, so these receivers aren't networked, so they're not aware of each other. So the process that you go through to make sure that you don't, uh, that you don't do that is you set up your first system. So you do the group scan, then you do the channel scan. Then you turn on the transmitter that you're going to have going with that receiver and program it to match that same frequency. Uh, and then leave that transmitter on and go do a channel scan on the next receiver. And when the, receiver, the second receiver is doing its scan, it will see that that channel is already occupied by the transmitter you just turned on and go to the next clear channel. So that's a very important step in the procedure there. And then you would continue that. So after you've scanned the second receiver, you turn on the second transmitter, program it, program it up to match that receiver, and then scan on the third receiver, and continuing that process until you have all of your systems set up. Great. Um, a related question, is there IR sync for the transmitters on the BLX systems? Oh, another good question, um, and I forgot to mention that. There is not. And uh, I'll, I'll elaborate, uh, because at, on, at, at the surface level, that may seem... Um, like we took a feature away, right? Well, you know, this is something that PGX did, the, the performance gear wireless did not. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the BLX series does not have this, and that is because uh, we, we, we learn things. We, we pay attention to, um, you know, uh, feedback from our customers and from inquiries that we get here. And it turns out that, uh, you know, we, in, in the many years of supporting the PGX wireless, one of the most common questions that we've gotten or one of the most confused things that people seem to have gotten is with the IR sync functionality, right? Because on, the, on any of those systems, you do a scan on the receiver, then you have to turn on the transmitter and point it at the receiver and hit the scan button to get the transmitter set up. And this, for whatever reason, we thought it was a cool feature when we came out that confused people. So we would constantly get calls from people who would say, 
I don't understand. My PGX is not working. I hit the channel button, and then we told them we have to do this IR synchronization, and it ended up being a long explanation. Um, so it turns out it's more intuitive to actually just open up the battery compartment and go, oh, the number I see on this display doesn't match the number on the receiver's display. I'll push the channel button here until I get to the right button. So it's a manual channel scan process, which while on the surface, again, seems like you took a feature out, is actually uh, more user-friendly for this particular customer. The higher-end systems, you know, SLX, ULX, D, uh, UHFR, those all have IR sync, uh, and that kind of, you know, makes sense. But for, for BLX, uh, we took it out, and turns out it's a good thing. Great. Um, another question. Um, in terms of the antennas, the um, tabletops as opposed to um, the rack mountable, um, how does the reception compare between the integrated antenna systems and the quarter wave systems? You know, it turns out it's really not all that different, which again seems sort of non-intuitive. You might you might look and think, well, you know, those antennas are inside. How could that be as good? Well, remember that receiver is made of plastic, and plastic is pretty much transparent to radio frequencies. So you're not you're not really perceiving any obstruction by it being inside. Uh, the design of the antenna is a little bit different because it has to be sort of bent over on itself to fit inside of there. And you know, I mean, there you may find some impact at the extreme edges of the operating range of these systems but you know we typically offer that if you have line of sight and you're on a clear frequency you can get up to uh up to you know maybe uh maybe uh 300 feet line of sight or something like that uh so you know that and with the blx with the internal antennas is that going to be affected Again, maybe at the extreme ends of that range, um, but uh, you know, in general, we've been selling the PG4 receiver for years with the internal antennas, and I can't think of a single call I've ever gotten from anyone complaining that it wasn't giving them good operating range. And this particular customer, and then I'll stop talking because it's probably a longer answer than it needed to be. For this particular <laughs> customer, usually that thing is sitting on top of the guitar amp, ten feet away from you, or you know, at the worst case, it's the side of the stage, twenty feet away at the longest. So you know, you don't find too many PG customers, uh, or maybe in this case, BLX customers, you know, really trying to cover a football field with this kind of system. And honestly, if that's what you were trying to do, I'd probably be, you know, bumping you up to ULX or something like that anyway. But really, don't be concerned about the antennas. <laughs> so uh, going back to that earlier question um, in regards to the sync and the scan, not having sync, um, there was a question. So on the handhelds and the body packs, there is a small display for the channel and the group. That's correct. Yes, it's inside the battery compartment, so you can't see it. But that's where you would be able to actually go and 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 look at it, uh, which again is actually, um, you know, again the the PGX transmitters don't have any display on them at all, which sort of made it a little bit hard to tell which transmitter was supposed to go with which receiver. Um, and at the time, we didn't put a display on it because we thought, well, why would you need a display? You're just going to IR sync it, and then it's synced and you're done. So hey, no no display necessary. Um, but again. BLX actually has a display, which turns out to, again, be a, a useful thing. But that is how you would then know which group and channel you're set to. Great. Um, another uh, transmitter question. Um, what are your thoughts about using rechargeable AA batteries in the body packs and the handhelds? You know, rechargeable AA batteries have come a long way. Uh, if you're going to do it, I would recommend a nickel metal hydride rechargeable uh, versus a nickel cadmium. The, the NICADs just don't have a high enough startup voltage they typically i think they might have like a you know 1.2 volts when they're fully charged which you know then you're already kind of at a disadvantage and, and they just don't have the current capacity to to really run a wireless transmitter for a long time but uh, if you use a good nickel metal hydride with a high current capacity uh then you'll probably be you know in 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 pretty good shape um uh, I think there's even some lithium rechargeables out there now that are that are pretty good as well. So, um, you know, if you're going to go rechargeable, just don't go cheap, and it'll probably work okay. Okay. Got another one here. Um, in terms of rack mounting these, uh, is there a rack mount kit available in order to mount the two uh, receivers, or is there a rack mountable BLX88? Ah, good question. Um, there is not a rack mountable BLX88. So you would have to use two of the four R's connected together. Uh, what you end up getting in the box, just like any of our other half rack systems, is you get all of the hardware necessary to either mount one by itself 
or if you have two BLX4Rs, you'll get enough hardware to mount two side by side. So there's these link bars that connect them together. Uh, if you're familiar with our SLX receiver, it's actually the same rack mounting scheme. So you use the link bars that are included to lock the two together, and then the short rack ears to put it in the 19-inch rack space. Great. And it looks like we have one last question. Um, and this is a hot question. Uh, what models are being replaced by the BLX? Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so obviously the price points that those things come, come in at line up, you know, kind of where the performance gear and PGX wireless systems were, were at. Um, I should note that we have not discontinued performance gear or PGX. Will they be discontinued? Well, everything gets discontinued eventually. I suppose no wireless system lasts forever. But um, but right now they are still available and they are still current products. And the BLX, I should stress, is not shipping today. It's it's imminent. Uh, we should have it soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you're a sure dealer, uh, if you're not a sure dealer, but you're an end user, stay in touch with your sure dealer, and they will let you know when it is available. So BLX is coming very soon. Uh, PG, PGX is, again, it's still out there. So you could still go buy one today. And, and you know, by all means, I mean, we've, 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 you know, talked a lot about the improvements of BLX. It certainly doesn't make PG or or PGX, uh, a bad system. They've been very popular. We've sold tons of them over the, over the past, you know, whatever, six, seven, eight years, however long PGX has been available. I can't believe it's that old now. Um, so, so they are not discontinued yet, but, you know, obviously eventually once BLX comes out, you know, it'll, it'll head that direction. Okay. Questions keep pouring in. Still got a few more. Excellent. Um, is this BLX an upgrade or a downgrade from the ULXP systems? Uh, the ULXP would certainly still be what I would consider a higher tier system than BLX. It's certainly more expensive, um, but the, the ULX system has a much wider tuning bandwidth. It's a 36 megahertz tuning range um, and much better RF specs that really allow you to get even more systems on the air. With ULX, there's, there's three frequency bands available, again, each one 36 megahertz wide, and you can do up to 20 systems in each band. So in a lot of cases, if you're really looking to do a lot of wireless systems, uh, you really do kind of want to be in the ULX system, as well as ULX also offering um, a wider range of mic heads, again, like the Beta 87s that we talked about and things like that. Um, so it really, the, the, the ULX is still more in the, you know, closer to the, to the, the premium end of the Sure wireless line. Um, so certainly, you know, and still a great sounding system. I mean, as old as it is, cause <laughs> like I said, ULX came out in 2002. Um, it's, it's still actually one of our top selling wireless systems and, and there's certainly no plans to discontinue ULX anytime soon. Great. Um, do you know where these uh, systems are being manufactured? What country of origin? I'd have to look up exactly what we're putting on that. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't want to guess on that one. Um, so uh, we'll have to follow up on that. If the question, a lot of times this question is usually the, 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 underlying theme to the question is, are they manufactured in the United States? And I can tell you that that is, that is not, not the case. I know for a fact that this is being manufactured in one of our other locations, um, probably either, um, either our, our plant in Mexico or one of our plants in China. But it's, so it's not the United States, I can tell you that much, if, that, if that's what's, <laughs> what's really being asked. So, <laughs> Of course. i uh, got another one here. Uh, the BLX4R is made of metal, correct? Yes. Um, what about the transmitters? What about the transmitters? BLX transmitters are plastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Great. And I think that is the last question I've got. So if you have any other questions that come up or that you didn't get a chance to ask, um, you can always email those to support at sure.com. And one of our wise applications engineers should be able to answer any other questions you have. So I believe that wraps it up for us today. I'd like to thank Gino for his fabulous presentation. Hope you're all as excited and happy about these BLX systems as we are, and we will catch you at the next webinar. Thanks so much for joining us.